Indy Mogul. Welcome to this week's Movie Math. Today is a special episode focusing on the front runners for the 2011 Academy Awards. And then, as always, a look at the weekend box office. Now let's get started. With just a few months to go before the end of the year, it's been awfully quiet on the Oscar front. Whereas in past years there were clear frontrunners for the gold, this year, at least so far, it seems to be anybody's game. So here's a look at the films that have some traction in the 2011 Oscar race. The most obvious contender for Oscar Darling is The Social Network. It's got a stellar creative team, it's of our times, and it's a chance for the Academy to make it up to David Fincher after largely ignoring the curious case of Benjamin Button. Also a seemingly slam dunk is Toy Story 3. While mega hits are usually shunned by the Academy, this is the Toy Story franchise's first chance at winning an Oscar, as the animation category didn't exist when the first two movies were released. But while it's a sure thing for an animation nom, can it pull a Beauty and the Beast and make it into the Best Picture category? Speaking of mega hits, will Inception get any recognition? While it's a huge audience favorite, the Academy might feel they already paid their dues to the public last year with Avatar Mania. Although, just like Fincher, they might want to reverse Christopher Nolan's snub as well. There's also this summer's The Kids Are Alright, which might be off the public opinion radar, but Focus Features is doing everything they can to keep it on the Hollywood radar. However, with the slew of festival favorites still slated to open, this indie film might slip through the cracks. And yes, many Oscar hopefuls have yet to be released. First, there's 127 Hours, Danny Boyle's follow-up to Oscar sensation Slumdog Millionaire. While James Franco is rumored to be a lock for a Best Actor nom, will the Academy feel Boyle's had his turn, or is he now one of their favorites a la the Coen brothers? As for the Coen brothers themselves, True Grit has a lot of people talking, but is it just a redux of No Country for Old Men? Plus, Jeff Bridges has already had his day in the Oscar sun. The movie will have to be hella good to warrant attention from the Academy, or the other contenders will have to be just that blah. There's also The King's Speech, a British period piece that was the toast of the Toronto Film Festival and is almost assured a slew of nominations. Yes, this is one of those movies the public never hears about, but the Academy falls in love with. Remember the reader? But on the plus side, Colin Firth's chances of winning Best Actor seem much stronger than they did for a single man. Then, coming out of left field might be The Fighter, Mark Wahlberg's dream project which he's finally gotten on the big screen. Strong performances from Wahlberg, Christian Bale, and critics darling Melissa Leo might help this film fight its way into multiple categories. And finally, there's The Black Swan. Its risque and bizarre content has certainly been turning heads, but while many feel Darren Aronofsky's classy thriller is a lock, will the older skewing Academy see it merely as horror ballet porn? And those are the top Oscar contenders. See anything you like? Feel anything's missing? And will you watch the Oscars if Inception or Toy Story 3 don't get any major nominations? Write your comments down below. While it won't win any Oscars, Jackass 3D sure took home the gold this weekend as it opened at number one with 50 million. That is not only by far and away the biggest opening ever for the franchise, but the biggest October opening ever, topping previous record holder Scary Movie 3. It's also the ninth biggest opening ever for an R-rated movie. I can assure you this is not the last Jackass movie and that Johnny Knoxville's career has new life breathed into it. If I were Johnny Knoxville bland look like Josh Dumel, I'd be scared. And while 3D ticket prices certainly helped, there's no denying that audiences had a huge interest in this movie, gimmick or no gimmick. And opening in second place was Red with 22.5 million. Well, that was big business for Helen Mirren and John Malkovich. It was on par with Bruce Willis's usual box office numbers and a little low for Morgan Freeman. So nobody was embarrassed, but nobody was particularly impressed either. Look for Red to be a solid performer that will certainly make its money back. But the real question is, what will it do for Helen Mirren's career, as she was the undisputed toast of the film? As for the rest of the box office, most films held steady, with the exception of My Soul to Take, which fell 54% from its opening weekend. The social network continues to slowly but surely rake in the cash, which it will most likely do all the way through awards season. Secretariat and Life as We Know It are performing neck and neck, representing chick flicks at both ends of the spectrum. Most impressive is The Town, which has snuck up to 80 million so far, and most disappointing is Wall Street 2, which, with a 70 million budget, will probably not make its money back. 
And that's this weekend's box office. As always, thanks for watching. I'm Grace Randolph, and we just did some movie math. Subscribe, comment, rate.